Welcome back to Block TV. This is Crypto Calendar. Now, the World Economic Forum at Davos is where the world's top wheelers and dealers congregate to set the policies for the rest of us plebeians. Now, today we are lucky enough to be joined by one of those wheelers themselves, Avia Arika, blockchain and crypto lawyer. Avia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, now, I'm sorry, I really appreciate you stepping away from the comments for a little bit to fill us in, but tell us, tell us, what have you seen so far from Davos? So, um, you know, I got here two days ago. This is my second day conferencing. Um, so far, I'm seeing, well, it, it's like this every year. Lots of people from different backgrounds. Uh, a lot of um, people from blockchain, a lot of people from cannabis this year as well. Um, I went yesterday to the Canatech Lounge. It was very interesting. And so uh, I'm seeing a lot of traffic, very good um, very good uh, energy this year. So um, I'm still, tomorrow I'm going to speak at the Crypto Valley event. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to meet uh, some more uh, people from the blockchain uh, circle. So up until now, it was more general. I went to some uh, other events, other tech events, and tomorrow is the main blockchain day. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Well, Davos, Davos is usually, uh, let's say, not a friend of cryptocurrencies or DeFi because it really is powered by, you know, the main, let's say, centralized power of finance. What have you heard, though? What is the feeling towards there uh, you're hearing right now towards cryptocurrencies? Uh, how do they become more amicable towards it? I, I wouldn't say the emphasis is on cryptocurrencies. I would say the emphasis is on, is on implementing blockchain technology into systems to make things more efficient, to cut costs, to increase margins, which is very in line with the West, uh, with the West approach, right? The West is dominated by people um, who are the elite of business and government, and people who are in the elite of business, their role is to understand how to keep from making money and making more and more money. So uh, I think blockchain is viewed today as a technology that can cut uh, costs and increase margins. Uh, for many companies, and it's being implemented in a very uh, big way by many companies. Um, this afternoon, actually, there's a talk with Jamie Dimon, the head of JP Morgan. I'm um, gonna go there and see. Maybe he refers to, to, to this issue, or maybe I can have, ask him a question, hopefully. Um, another thing is uh, tokenization. It is being talked about a little bit. I was at the CNBC lounge today. They were talking about uh, implementing innovative technologies into real estate, and they were also referring to tokenization. It wasn't, it didn't get a lot of emphasis in the talk, but you know, it's, it's a thing. Um, it's in the top, it's in the titles, uh, but crypto, no, I'm not hearing any talk of, of cryptocurrency specifically, which mm -hmm. makes sense. Right, well, I mean, you, you did mention that, uh, you know, the, the bankers are there, there are also, there are also government officials there. Now, maybe not crypto, but has there been any talk of a CBDCs at all, central bank, uh, decentralized currencies or digital currencies? Um, not, 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 not up until now. We'll see what's going on tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be in the panel with um, Marwan and Zawuni from Dubai, from Dubai government. I know Dubai is doing a lot in terms of blockchain policy right now. Uh, they issued a few days ago or a few, like last month, month, I think, a policy instructing government authorities on how to implement blockchain. Uh, so I think Dubai is maybe looking at a, a central bank, central bank backed digital currency. China is looking at it. Uh, it's interesting to see to go to some Chinese focused events and see. I haven't been there yet. Uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll squeeze it in the schedule as well. Um, but uh, I I haven't attended any event that was talked about it so far. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, for sure, you know, especially when talking about China, there's always issues with privacy and privacy has long been, been a promised, uh, a promised feature of the blockchain. Has there been any focus on privacy, digital privacy at Davos this year? Yeah, actually, there's a lot of talk about GDPR, GDPR and CCPA. CCPA is a new American privacy regulation in California. Um, there's a big talk about GDPR and CCPA. How, how they, come, how they come together with blockchain. Um, you know, there was a saying uh, a while back that GDPR became irrelevant from the day it came into force because of blockchain. 
So right now, I think a lot of policymakers are sort of uh, wrapping their heads around how to implement GDPR on blockchain systems. Right now, the solutions that I'm seeing are not very, from, from a lawyer's point of view, I can say, okay, they're satisfactory, but from a blockchain believer point of view, I can say they're not, because right now the main solution is to sort of create a parallel database and store that the information off chain to enable people to be forgotten, right? There's the right to be forgotten. So from a legal point of view, that's okay. But from uh, the blockchain perspective, it's sort of, you know, shooting ourselves in the, in the knee. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a blockchain law expert, um, have you seen, have you gotten a feel these policymakers uh, and regulators are kind of getting an understanding of the technology and, and where do you see regulation leading uh, going forward? Yeah, I, I definitely think uh, every regulator and policymaker or government official today that you know respects themselves um, know blockchain, understand blockchain. To what extent that varies? Obviously, not all of them understand it exactly. Uh, I can tell you that um, there's even a uh, research project called Eurochain. It's by the European Union. It's 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 a, it's a conglomerate of 18 central banks from uh, the EU. And they published a proof of concept last month about how a digital euro can be created and implemented. It's very interesting. It's just a POC right now. So there's a lot to be talked about still. But you can see uh, people at the EU level uh, checking and, and, and sort of uh, feeling through the way of, of best implementing a digital euro. And, uh, uh, in each and every central bank. So that's very interesting. And the U.S. is looking at a uh, Federal Reserve Act cryptocurrency, digital currency. So yes, it, it's a topic here. I believe that during the forum, we're going to speak about it, maybe in some uh, one of the panels. I was following and I didn't, I wasn't exposed to it yet, but uh, there's still one whole day to come, one and a half days, so we'll see. But it's getting attention for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, some, some say that you know, CBDCs really uh, got pushed to the forefront and governments really started noticing digital currencies once Libra uh, actually uh, announced itself and that really woke up a lot of government officials. Now, David Marcus, uh, Libra's head, is expected to speak later at Davos. What is the buzz around, in, is there buzz around that potential speech as well as what are you expecting to hear from him? <laughs> I think there's gonna be a lot of controversy there. I don't think, um, you know, as I see it, Facebook's Libra started very brave and, you know, um, the, the bravery descended slowly because they understand they're not going to pull it off. And uh, the U.S. is not, the U.S. government is not going to let them pull it off the way they wanted to. So I think they're going to have to find a, a way in the middle. Um, we'll see what he says. It's interesting. But by the way, in terms of regulation, to answer your previous question, so there are a lot of changes coming in 2020. Um, Estonia, which, was, which is a jurisdiction that I've been working with for five years now, they're changing their AML law in a big way. You know, up until now, it was very straightforward, easy to get an Estonian uh, cryptocurrency exchange license. From March, it's going to be completely different. Uh, the requirements are changing. They understand that they opened the door a little bit too much, and now they have to close it and to make sure that people are actually running things the way they should run and that people have an actual presence in Estonia so that the, the law could have teeth because it was a teethless law up until now. And we're seeing a lot of, uh, I think in 2020, we're going to see a lot of regulations coming tomorrow on my panel, as well as uh, um, guys from Liechtenstein. Uh, Liechtenstein has a very interesting blockchain app, which is, I personally know a lot of companies that have the budget and the ability to, let's say, uh, put some effort into, into getting the license are going to Liechtenstein. Switzerland is a country that I personally am working with very closely. Uh, the SRO licenses in Switzerland are a great solution for exchanges. So I think there will be a shift because Estonia is, is hardening their requirements. There will be a shift towards countries that don't require regulation, for example, for exchanges like the UK, or to countries that um, require regulation but have better reputation like Switzerland and Liechtenstein. So it's going to be interesting to see in 2020 where, where it's going. Mm -hmm. It will. Now I've seen multiple times on screen a man dressed up like Ronald McDonald at Davos. Have you seen him at Davos walking around or on any of the panels? <laughs> no. 
You have no, not. I'm going to look for him now. You will. All right. Well, that's your, that's my mission for you. Avia, thank you so much for joining us from Davos. Uh, we really thank appreciate you. you taking the time. Have fun. And for all our viewers out there, if you want more on Davos news, cryptocurrency, or blockchain, make sure to check us out at blocktv.com. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.